Living In with Becca Tilly and Tanya Rad, an iHeartRadio and two-time People's Choice Award-winning podcast. <laughs> well, I was... So, um, Haley, Marla, and I went to the same hotel a few months ago for Haley's birthday, and so when... Uh, you and Red Star were looking, they were asking me about the hotel and I was like, it's beautiful. But then I, you know, you give a recommendation somewhere where you had an amazing time and you're like, I really hope that this lives up to my recommendation. Oh, it lived up to your recommendation times 10. I know. I'm so happy. Y'all like really took advantage of all the amenities, the yoga studio, which I did not Oh yeah. Every day yoga. Like we really just kind of like, we were one with nature that trip. (laughs) I we okay so Haley and I went to Cabo and we were also one with nature yeah in a different way like we were just like out in the water they were like jumping stingrays we went I know snorkeling. I was surprised to see you get in the water right because yeah. I'm so scared of sharks like my biggest fear um but yeah we just like I don't know if we were kayaking and paddle boarding and we did the sunrise paddleboard the morning before we left and there was something really like calm and peaceful about being out there. I, I bet there's nothing better than a sunrise. Like, honestly, well, you know, I'm like much more of a sunset kind of girl, <laughs> but it was definitely worth the effort of getting up because let me tell you something, waking up when it's dark outside is not my vibe, not my brand. Not right, my vibe. Right, that's my vibe. <laughs> yeah. It's your vibe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really fun. How do I do this respectfully? Does my breath smell bad? A lot of the time. You're probably so confused. Does my breath smell right now? No, nice and fresh. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I would have put gum in before. I just, I can put it on the top of my, um. He says no sometime. Wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I, I'm going to have to tell 95P. <laughs> Why do you ask? <laughs> Why doesn't he tell me that my breath smells? Do I have halitosis? It's not. I swear it's not every time I see I dated you, a guy that had halitosis. It's not halitosis. I'm, I'm very like, I'm triggered by all of this right now. It's not halitosis. Sometimes. <laughs> I appreciate his honesty. <laughs> Yeah, man. I'm a little shocked he went there. Yeah, the answer is no. Your breath smells like roses and daisies, Angel. <sighs> 95P is like rarely do like I feel like I'm always really cautious of it. But we are respectful towards each I other. I am too. Like the minute it. I have really bad breath in the morning when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> like what? I have really bad breath in the morning, like very, very bad. And so when I wake up, oh, he's FaceTiming me. Hang on. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, can Becca can Becca tell us any more about her relationship with 95P? Oh, you know, I was I don't know if this is anything new, but I was just talking about how we I feel like in relationships and I feel like you actually can agree with this. There's always one person, Mark and Easton, y'all can lay in here, who is uh a communicator and confronts issues and then there's the uh avoider and i feel like i know your relationship has it Mm -hmm. my relationship has it i don't know about y'all too where one person's like let's talk it out and the other person's like i just want to shut down and not talk about it is that something Mm -hmm. y'all experience i think that's accurate yeah 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 that may have been information I've already shared. I don't know if there's anything. That's there. the information you share. Therapy Lame. stuff. Lame. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so last week when I was struggling, I realized that I never ask for comfort from people. Like I'm very much like I can self-soothe. I can do it myself. I don't need anyone yeah, to like very coddle me. That's another trait I would like of yours. Okay, but... It's kind of a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. So I really needed 95P this week. You know, I was just like, I was able to be very vulnerable and say like, I really need this or I need comfort. And, you know, 95P and I don't receive or give comfort the same way. And so um, there was a moment where I was really struggling 
and 95p tried to comfort me and i was like this, this is it. not it. <laughs> i feel your effort and i really appreciate it but i feel worse now so and and it was kind of that conversation of like well what is what does comfort you and i was like i actually don't know because yeah, never i don't do it. it yeah i've needed it i just haven't reached out reached out and um and so there was just effort and I appreciated the effort so much. Like even in couples therapy, I was able to be like, even though it wasn't perfect or it wasn't what I needed, I appreciated the effort so much because I could feel it. Like it was like, let's try different things. Let's sit on the couch and watch TV all day because that's what I like to do. And um, so I agree with you. Like sometimes it's not going to be this like perfect idea of what you expected it to be. But yeah. when you can feel that someone's trying, that is as special in my opinion as you know someone doing it in the perfect way for sure yes. maybe <laughs> no I'm kidding oh that's kinky <laughs> yeah yeah okay wait have Becca's parents met 95p uh my mom has and that's it care to share more <laughs> I mean, my mom has <laughs> all right and yeah it won't it was advice fun. for staying in the present Um, struggling because my significant other and I are different faiths more because of what other people think. Ugh. I, we both kind of are do or in one of these. Yeah. <laughs> I am less concerned about what people think about, um, in that regard, because we both have such a respect for each other regarding that topic. And so if anything, I think sometimes, uh, there's curiosity uh, for 95P over like my faith. And I think what I was talking about, like in certain things, like I just feel like a piece that I can only kind of attribute to my faith and like believing in something that's so much bigger than me. And so I think there's this respect and curiosity. We were raised so differently that like you can't expect one of us to be like the other with how we were raised, if that makes sense. Like, I was raised in the South. I was raised in a Christian home. I was raised by parents who also were like in that same culture. Mm -hmm. And so I naturally was always going to grow up in that way. And then 95P grew up out in California and had a very different upbringing. And so there's just, I think it comes down to respect. And I think a lot of people are very judgmental about people being together with different faiths. And I don't really understand why they feel the need to like share that type of opinion yeah. because it's really none of their business. But if it's healthy and you both have respect for each other, the caring what other people think part is don't, don't let that affect you because it's none of their business. with you and is in Vegas with his dudes at a golf tournament or like whatever. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. I was like, you know what? Yeah. So you're full, you're really enjoying it. But yeah. it's very different. It's very different. It's nothing I ever saw for myself, but in the same way, he's exactly what I saw for myself. So it's this weird. This is, that is so weird. I literally said to Haley the other day, I go, it's so funny because I never saw Tanya being with someone who had kids yet Robbie is who I could see, who I would see Tanya with. Yeah. It, that's so funny that yeah. you said I felt the same way. Well, I feel the same way. Yes. Uh, Becca, there's only two more left. Becca, how did you meet 95? You never shared this. How did you meet 95 P and what was your first date? We met at an event that I actually was not going to go to, but in my mind I thought, worst case scenario if it sucks we I, I was with a group of friends i was like we can go somewhere else right always the move by the way always the move go but it actually it sucks. was so much fun we yeah. had a great time so we met there not i i didn't go with 95p but i went with another friend and we met that's how we met yeah but what was your first date um our first date we have different this kind of goes back and forth. We don't have like a set first date because technically the first date was more of like a friend thing, but we ended up talking for like four hours at the, at this restaurant bar and like it closed while we were still there. So like we kind of shut it down. And I it's remember leaving being like, huh, that was interesting. I've never done that before. So that was, 
we always say it's our first date, but like it technically was not a date. Like if you reenacted your first date in 10 years, would you go back to that same bar? We've been back there for to an recreate. anniversary. Oh, OK. Yeah. So that is your first date. Yeah, because yeah. it was a significant moment. I think right, where we both realized I see, it. I see. <laughs> like butterflies. Uh-huh. Uh, and the last one is rate your first kiss with your significant other. Oh my God. Like a hundred out of 10. Wow. <laughs> it was like the best kiss ever. Yeah. What would you rate yours? <laughs> I just want to hear more. <laughs> yeah. It was just, it was a, it was a really good kiss. <laughs> like, you know how when you kiss someone for the first time, it can be awkward and like, you're like, don't know they're different like if you've kissed someone for a long time and then you kiss someone for the first time and you're kind of like oh this is different it's like not familiar like the person i was with for a minute yeah this didn't feel like that so like that's great yeah (laughs) i was guess what becca answered you know I, what, I'm, though? I've I'm actually very thought, practical. I've also thought about that. this a lot. I am very practical and logical. And my thought process was like, a, I'm not talking like, I don't even think people can really con- like understand how much money that is and what you can yes, do with that agreed. money. Like, I, I really don't think like you hear, mil- I would never get rid of, I would never break up and said get rid of. Yeah, I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would never um, sacrifice my relationship for a million dollars. It would have to be a billion, no less. But like, I don't even think people can grasp how much money that is. And in my mind, you know, I believe that there is happy. Like, there's so many people in this world. I personally logically think it's going dark. (laughs) No, I'm just saying I think there's so many people in the world. I think there can be happiness with other people. I don't think you're limited to happiness with one person because in that case, these people who have lost their partners or when something doesn't work out that they think is going to be for forever, it kind of is a sad reality of like, well, that was my only one. I don't think there's anything wrong with that answer. I think that's a very fine answer. It's a thousand million dollars. You can do a lot of good with that. And yeah, there's seven and a half billion people in the world. I think that's a fine answer. So we thought of a twist to the question because so, wait, Becca no, was no, no, so no. blanketed. So, it was just, Becca was like, yeah, I wait, take so the billion. Then, so then 95 P came over later in the night and <laughs> we presented <laughs> the question. And the answer was at the, at first it was, no, I would not be given up for a billion dollars. But then when we it were slowly alone, started shifting, I presented the facts of like, think <laughs> of what you could do with that. I would be mad at you if you didn't take it. And the answer switched. Okay, what's the twist? So now we, this, this is actually like so sad because over the weekend we were like thinking about it and Red Star, Red Star goes, I have a twist that we need to ask <laughs> Becca to see if it changes her answer. And I was like, what is it? And he said, if you were given a billion dollars and you had to give Phoebe away forever, would you take the billion dollars and give Phoebe away forever? Never get to see her again. This is longer than it took her ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just thinking because Come on. wow, no, because like <laughs> there's a lot of dogs in the world. Yeah, there's Becca, a lot, a lot. Of dogs. Yeah, here's the thing. I I also it's the same concept of like there are so many dogs. But here's the thing right. with both 95P and Phoebe, I it, it's not like it would be an easy decision. Like I wouldn't do it and just be like bye. It would be like heartbreak. Like I'm aware that I would feel heartbreak for an inevitable amount of time and probably some guilt more so with Phoebe because I couldn't explain to her. Like I couldn't get her to understand, like, listen, I'm getting a billion dollars. Think of how many doggies I can save with that money. But with 95 P I could be like, listen, I, this, I can help. I can help your family. I can help my family. I can help so many people with this. Mm -hmm. And I hope that as a human being, there's an, you know, understanding, but, um, (laughs) 95p the other day i so after our initial conversation about it i woke up the next morning and i still couldn't believe that both tanya and red star were just like no you know we all have different views on different things and <laughs> and well so then the funny part is that uh 95p i brought it up again and and the answer was, I go, you take the billion dollars, right? And the answer was in heartbeat. And I go, wait, wait, wait. 
Not in a heartbeat. <laughs> this isn't like yeah, in a heartbeat <laughs> type yeah, of answer. Yeah, it was like a... So we had to set some things straight there as well. But <laughs> I said, the good thing is this is never going to happen. So right, it's a yeah, no yeah, one gone. needs to get. That would be weird. Yeah, yeah it'd be weird. Things we have to, you know, but you work through it and you get past it and you, you know, move on. But I think a lot of people don't want to put in the work. Yeah, it's true. Putting in the work on relationships or on yourself is sucks. <laughs> sucks. I know. I was there. Sometimes this, it just like is uncomfortable. There was this pink article. I remember I did a trending report on it once when she was like, people who don't are not in long term relationships really just don't want to work on themselves because being in a long term relationship is like working on yourself a lot. And I was just like, I didn't really understand it because I was single for seven years. And I was just doing whatever the fart right. i wanted yeah you know and now it's just so different and i'm like i get it i totally get it because red star and i see i mean we we see eye to eye on a lot of things but i'm super sensitive and he's super not mm -hmm. so whenever i say like something hurts my feelings he's just like doesn't get it mm -hmm. and i'm like okay now i have to go back and figure out like where is this coming from inside <laughs> me like what childhood trauma is this yeah. triggered by like <laughs> So I actually I was just having this conversation because I have a few um I have like some friends who have been in like long term relationships and broke up and one of them was like willing to like work on the relationship and the other was kind of like no I'm good you know and I was telling uh 95p the other day I was saying like I feel really grateful that both of us put in the work on ourselves and into the relationship because you know being I think and I don't think this is everyone's case but I think when you're very different and you have different views on pretty much everything and how you just see things and how you argue and how you communicate you almost have to put in the like equal amount of work for the relationship to be healthy yeah yes. you know I was a hand model wow. recently for um Haley's perfume Hugh Oh yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, I think I remember remember you telling me that. It was yeah. a big deal for me. It just happens. I think it just happens. Yeah, and things just change. When people get into a relationship, like I was thinking about this the other day. When um well, when I got into a relationship, it was like I wanted to spend time with 95P, like whenever there was a chance. And then I was thinking about how Allie and I, like when she got into a relationship with someone who she's like obsessed with, it's like so exciting to see. But like our our friend, like we don't see each other as much as we did, but we still talk all the time. It's like, yeah, I remember we used to like see that. each other every single day. Well, yeah, because we lived, we shared a door. Still, though, that's like a lot. Like we saw each other every single day. Was a lot. Tanya. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, it's true. I, I mean, Truly. life stages change the dynamic of friendship, but it doesn't mean that you mean less to each other or that you don't care it just means like we're entering a new phase of life and it's different and that's just how it is but is the r for rad and i was like oh my god you don't even like he, he's like <laughs> that is man. like that's where he's at like guys i'm like men i know like so oblivious <laughs> and i was like um it's for your name and he was like really like he was like touched and i was like wow it's still a little weird though isn't it isn't that weird just by yourself that uh well no because i <laughs> is it weird no I, I actually had uh i had an initial for 95p uh earring that you got for yourself yeah i don't wear it anymore It's so funny because like all of y'all are friends. We've done my birthday together. We've like been to things together, but y'all are all from different parts of my life. You yeah. Know? And so, and it was so unplanned. Like impromptu, I was impromptu. Some may say, yeah, Jojo's in town right now. Um, and she was, she'll just text me. She's staying like five minutes down the road. So she'll just be, I'm just coming over. I'm bringing you Starbucks. So she'll just come out. She is my friend who, like she can sit on the couch and we can like order takeout and she eats the same as me. She enjoys like just she don't have to do anything. So she's that friend for me. So we were sitting there. Tanya FaceTimes. You were crying. You were yeah. like upset about something <laughs> and just cr starts crying. And I like flash it over to Jojo to be like, hey, Jojo's here too. In case you're 
you know, don't want anyone to hear. Which what I appreciated. That I appreciated the, the the warning. And um, so she then she starts laughing because she's like, I don't even know why I'm crying. But I'm like, come over. We're just hanging out. So then um, Haley and Marla were working from my house. And so Haley, Marla and Tanya all showed up within like a minute of each other. So it was just like everyone. Was, I felt like I was on a Friends episode. And then <laughs> um, Allie DMs me and she's like, I feel left out. This feels very unkind. And I'm like, come over. Like, this wasn't even a planned thing. So she comes over and it's like the energy of (laughs) all my friends together. It's like we were all PMSing at the exact same time. We all had like different things. So I was like really upset that day just with like just some work career stuff was was uh, it was like a hard day for me. And then Allie was kind of we're having like a work issue like she she hurt her knee and so she's kind of feeling physical down. a little yeah. physical downness yeah. jojo was down about uh jojo just is anxious and spirally yeah, at all yeah. any given moment and becca's the only one that's just like <laughs> even just keeled like staring listening to all the conversations <laughs> happening like wow this is like a ball of anxiety all in one place what a joy <laughs> And in my mind, because I, for basically the whole 2020, Haley and I worked out with our trainer, Ostrid, and it was just Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And that was like part of the day, which when we weren't doing anything, it was so, you know, it was like something to do. I felt so good after I did it. And then as things started to pick back up, I just kind of, and then moving and everything, I just stopped doing it. And then I just, I'm like, I, I was laying there today, like literally on the verge of throwing up thinking, why, why did I, why did I come back? <laughs> why did I come back? No, but that's interesting. If you could have a quality of your significant other, what would it be? That would be my, I mean, I would pick a lot of things of his, but that one is probably top. Tier. Probably passion and drive. 95 P. Got it. I think we've talked about that before. I mean, you've been like, you're in a relationship for how, how long has it been now? Like official three years and five months. Wow. Almost. Yeah. Almost three and a half years. That's wild. I know that is wild because even sometimes when I think about that, it feels like it feels more like two years. Okay. Which is just a flash in the pan. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I know. It's it's like, it's just cool of how much life has happened and how we have all done it together and had the, you know, the live shows. And it's just, it's cool because there's definitely been like highs and there's been times where it's been hard to get on here and have a podcast that was like. Uh, where are you on the crown? Because it was T- Ted Lasso and Hacks were big winners in the crown as well. Where are you guys in the crown? I, I, I can't get into it. I've watched two seasons of it. And it's interesting because I do agree it's incredibly well made and it's very, very interesting. But I'm never looking forward to the next episode. Yeah, I'm like, I, I, I can't get into it. Haley watched it, like binged it the first two seasons. But she told me she was like, I, there's no chance you would like that show. <laughs> so I've never even tried. And I, I respect that about myself. You know, I, I know who I am. I know what I like. And I'm interested in some of it, but I'm also kind of not, which is okay. Yeah. Like, it's such a great feeling when you get into a show and you can't wait to watch the next one. Like, for I, it's example. It's such a great oh, feeling. It's so rare to feel that. Season three of Sex Education just came out. I love everything about that show. I love every character. I love the casting. I love the world they create. I love the wardrobe. I love the sex positive messaging. I love the music. I love everything about that show. I love it. And I can't wait. I don't want to do anything else except watch it. Do I need to watch it? Yeah, that's Haley actually was saying she was so excited about the two and I didn't even know there were other seasons of it. So it's phenomenal. I really What's it on Netflix? Yeah. Would you compare that to Ted Lasso? (laughs) All right. Well, on the end of that note, hope you all have a great week. What do you have this week? Take those girls out to play tonight. (laughs) Have a date with 95P. Do you have a date night tonight, Anita? Are you on your period? Are you getting your period? Why are they so big? That's what I said. I'm about to start my period. They get 
bigger. And so I texted her and I said, uh, Jennifer Aniston just got here. And then I put my phone down because we were like on a double date. So I wasn't really like engaging. So then I think at that point you texted Red Star, right? So or both I'm, of us together. So Haley and I are sitting on the couch. We just ordered pizza. We were watching Bachelor in Paradise. And Tanya texts me, Jennifer Aniston <laughs> is at the table next to us. And I'm like, what? You're just so casual about this. So I'll write back and I'm like, should we get dressed and come meet y'all? We did not know they were on a double date. I thought it was just her and Red Star. So, oh, I didn't tell you that? No. Oh. <laughs> so they're like, yeah. So she doesn't answer. So I text Robbie. I'm like, wait, should we get dressed and come have a drink with you? And like, not that I was ever going to say anything to Jennifer Aniston. I was just like, I don't know. I got excited. So we like rush and throw Mind on. Mind you, like you wouldn't do that for anybody. Literally no one else. Yeah. Literally no one else. Yeah. And it's not even like I was ever going to say anything to her. Like I've been within like three feet of her and I could not find the words. And I was holding my People's Choice Award. Yeah, like you, you I, were both winners. They were both winners of the same People's Choice Award. And Becca couldn't even speak to her. And we're <laughs> in the same like. Oh, sorry. I thought you brought your People's Choice Award with you to the restaurant. No, 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 <laughs> no. At the People's Choice Award, when we won the second year, the second year we won, I had the People's Choice Award and I was able to get back into this back section where it was like Jennifer Aniston, Adam Sandler. Like I was the lowest person there, but I had a People's Choice Award. Right in hand. And I was probably the most established I will ever be next to Jennifer Aniston. Right. And I could not. You were like one with her. Well, no, I wasn't because she won like person of the year or whatever. Right, right. She was being honored as like the <laughs> but, yeah, that, yeah. But <laughs> I was like, you know, had the most. Uh, that was like my moment, and I couldn't do it. So seeing her at a restaurant, I, there was never going to be anything that happened. It was just going to be a cool story. So <laughs> we're like rushing to get there. I text Tanya, texts me out and just puts her phone down. <laughs> like I said, I didn't know she was on a double date. So I text. It, a group chat with her and Red Star. And I'm like, wait, do we get dressed and come? So we throw on the most <laughs> random outfits, like literally within five minutes, throw my hair up, driving. I'm like speeding. I live a good, you know, 15 minutes from this restaurant. It's not like down the street. And they're texting updates like we're stalling, <laughs> like we've ordered dessert, we're ordering coffee. And then it, right. we're literally three minutes away. And he's, uh, Red Star texts me. He's like, um, you better hurry. I think she's paying her check. And I'm like, because <laughs> oh by the way, God. at this point, like we were stalling. So like none of us wanted dessert, but we ordered dessert <laughs> so that we could have because they were trying to get rid of us. They're trying to move the table. Right. So they're trying to like, tell us like, wrap it up. Let's go. And then we get the dessert. We're eating the dessert. The lady comes by and she's like, do you want anything else? And <laughs> Robbie goes, I'll have a decaf espresso. <laughs> I was like, I love you and respect you so much for this. Cause he was like really doing it for you. So yeah, it was so sweet. So <laughs> while I'm like racing, there were three minutes away. Who drinks a decaf espresso by the way? This What's was, the point? <laughs> yeah, there is none. But none, none, just a stall. Haley goes, what are you going to say to her? If you see her? And I'm like, literally not. I will have nothing to say. Like th my brain when, I have been in close proximity. It does not work. I like can't. I get too nervous around celebrities. I can't say anything. But you had a 45 minute drive. Did you spend no, 15, the drive? Just 15 minutes. Okay. You had a drive. You didn't it's spend the drive. It's only 15 minutes? Yeah. So I go, I said my go-to because I, from what I remember, she's a Bachelor fan or has in the past. I was going to be like, Jen, you're missing Bachelor in Paradise. That was like going to be my line. <laughs> So they're like texting as we're walking in. They're like, she's getting up. She's getting up. And I'm like, whatever. Okay. But at this point, I'm already stressed. I'm nervous. I'm not going to say anything. Literally, we pass by her, like make eye contact. Her bodyguard was with her. So there was like never a chance. I think he could feel my energy as a fan. <laughs> like, I think he knew without knowing anything that I had just driven from my home to like come see Jennifer Ransom. So... <laughs> We just walked by like that was the extent of it because she was like with her, you know, she was living her life. I get to the table where Tanya and Red Star are, and their friends are right there. And I'm like, <laughs> I am mortified that these two people who don't know me have. This is how they're meeting me that I just got I off the couch and came. I didn't realize that I didn't tell you we were on a double That's date. That's interesting. You didn't re realize that. <laughs> 
it didn't matter to me. All I saw was Jennifer Aniston, and then my eyes just went different. Like, to be Burr. honest, I don't know that I would have come because I would have been like, that's kind of embarrassing. It was already embarrassing, but then having two strangers <laughs> know that me, like, as that, their first time meeting me, really felt embarrassing. So, in my mind, <laughs> so it's chaos they're trying to take the table they're like well there's another table at the bar area if y'all want to have a drink so we just sat and have drinks and i got to know their friends and they were like so who else like would you be excited to come meet and i'm like i swear i would there's not a single other person i can think of that i would get off the couch just for a signing up and i don't even know why i felt inspired to do that because like I said, I was never going to say no, it was just fun. Like, it's not like, here's the thing. It's not like you're like a Jennifer Aniston stalker by any means. It's like, you're just like, it's fun. And we but live in LA. And, no, we it live in LA stalkery. and this stuff is so cool. Like if somebody texted me that like, I'd probably, I would probably do it for Beyonce, that Beyonce was at a restaurant that they were at. I would for sure do the same thing and not even i would, probably wouldn't even say anything to her just to get a glimpse yeah but that's what i've had a glimpse of Jennifer <laughs> Aniston, so i don't know why i was so inspired like i don't know what i thought like if she was gonna be like hey can we go, come have a drink with right, us? Like, oh my you god know, it's like, my long lost friend that we just like yeah. yeah i remember her lingering at the people's choice awards in that room with us she's scary um no i don't know but it was just an exciting, I was like, whatever, it'll be a story. Yeah, and you were carefree. You were like, one with the wind. Yeah, I just don't, I will be honest, like, I rarely get overly excited about very, like, L.A. things. Like, I kind of feel jaded in that sense. Like, I remember when I lived, grow, growing up in Louisiana, and I heard anyone lived in California, they could have lived in, like, San Francisco, and I'd be like, I bet they see celebrities all the, all time. the time. That's so cool. They live in California. And so, um, you know, I got to live out a little bit of that fan girl energy so then we're just sitting and talking with their friends who were so kind and like really made me feel so much less like psycho even though I was like horrified and like Tanya thanks for the heads up that you were with your friends because this is so embarrassing literally all the only thing I looked back at our text messages the only thing I said to Becca was uh Jennifer Aniston is at where I can't remember the table next the table next to us and then literally just put my phone down like no engagement after that point. Yeah. So I had to go to Red Star <laughs> and he pulled through and really stalled with the decaf espresso for me. Um, so, yeah, we got a glimpse. <laughs> there were no words exchanged. I just smiled and kept walking, got to the table, was so embarrassed. Then we had drinks. It was great. As we're sitting there having drinks, um, their friend has is he he opened the restaurant and Vegas that y'all had gone to a few months ago? Was that months? Yeah. And they're like, should we go to Vegas this weekend? And we're all like, yeah, let's go to Vegas this weekend. This is on Tuesday night. You can. You had just gotten back from Vegas on Sunday? Tanya had. Me, just me. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a few drinks. (laughs) We all say goodbye. We'll talk about Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about right, Vegas. Right. It's like one of those things that like, you know, and like you have the conversation and then you're like, okay, we we're all like had some drinks. Peeps, no peeps from anybody the next day, mind you. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, okay. I was just like drunk talk, right? So Haley goes, hey, are we really going to Vegas? Because I need to rearrange some stuff on Friday if we're really going. And I'm like, I haven't heard from anyone, but I'll double check to make sure we're all on the same page. So I'm like, hey, are we still going to Vegas this weekend? This is on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, I'm in. Everyone's like, I'm in. Should we book flights? Let's book the hotel. We book everything (laughs) on Thursday afternoon. It's chaos. Apparently it was the busiest weekend in Vegas that we were planning to go. And we went to Vegas. We're so young. We're so spontaneous. (laughs) So young and spontaneous and youthful. So we go, we get on the flight, but of course, I almost missed the, Haley and I almost missed the flight. Becca's one of those people where like, so. Oh. Okay, go ahead. You, well, yeah, this one wasn't your fault, this but wasn't her fault. wasn't her fault, but she's one of those people who like, you know, those people when you're like at the gate and the people are like running up to the gate, like <laughs> hold the plane. Becca's one of those people. 
I am. And I've talked about this on the podcast. It's not something that I love about myself, but I hate being at the airport too early. Like I hate sitting around the airport. It's just the yeah, worst. Yeah, we talked about this. I don't understand this in the slightest. My so, favorite thing though is like you called me and I was already panicked because there was like traffic here and I would have already liked to have been on the road. <laughs> and she's like, hey, I'm all, hey, she's all, do you need my doll at your house? And I'm all, no panic, no, like, I'm, like, stressed about nothing. Just, do you have any mind? I was like, no, at that point, there was no reason to be stressed. Jeez. At that point, I was, so this was the first time ever that I was actually, like, ready early, and I was waiting on Haley, and she was like, you told me to get here at 4.30, I got here at 4.35, and I was like, well, maybe don't listen to my timing next time, because we were definitely running to the gate, but we made it. I was so Have stressed. you ever missed a flight before? I sure have, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. And you know what? I always say, I get to the gate and they're like, I'm sorry, we can't do it. And I'll be like, you know, I'll do like, oh, are you sure? Like, you can't do it. And they're like, no. And I'm like, that's okay. It's my fault. That's my fault. What What can we do here beyond this moment? And they put me <laughs> on the next flight. And it's just, I accept that that's who I am and it's my fault. No one's mad. And I'm the opposite person where I like to have plenty of time. I like to be sitting oh. at my gate, getting a water, getting a little snack. Yeah. Well, what's the harm in having too much time? There's a bookstore. Like, there's all place, all kinds of stuff to do. Have a get a slice of pizza. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's great. You don't want a slice of pizza on a long flight. That could hurt your tummy. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I like, just like relaxing in the airport, waiting for my flight. It's me great. too. I like it's, to relax. I don't like to stress. Home. But what's so funny no. is like I was having secondary, or what do they call them? Like sympathy pains, like when somebody's pregnant. <laughs> I was having like sympathy anxiety, waiting for them to like meet us. And we're holding the seats because obviously, like I think uh, Red Star and I were the first ones in. So we're like holding the seats. And I'm so bad at holding seats because people are like. Oh, on Southwest. That's yeah. the worst. It's the worst. No, they hate it when you do that. And I get it. I understand why they hate it when we do that. And they're like, you are they on the that? plane? And I'm like, yeah, little no. They're like not even through security yet. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're in the plane. They're in the bathroom in the front. Yeah. So I'm having like secondary pains, <laughs> secondary anxiety through you. Haley kept going, we just did not deserve to make this flight. And I was like, we made it to quit saying that. Like we will not do that. You will not do that again. I probably will, but we did it. So we land in Vegas and we were like, let's just do it big. We're here for 24 hours. We got a limo SUV from the airport to the hotel. Mind you, which I do want to talk about because you know how, like when you're in, when you do that and everyone's like, somebody's going to be the DJ, right? <laughs> It's a thankless job because it's a thankless job if you're not good at it. No, I'm great <laughs> at it. I have really great music. I have the music in me. I had very a lot of people that just wanted different things. I had somebody wanted techno. Somebody wanted upbeat. Another liked house music. Another one wanted old school. I was just like, I can't I can't keep up. Oh, well, Every song, it was like, no, not this one. It was a. It was an assortment of Sean Mendez, no, Camila no. Cabello. <laughs> so so yeah, face. imagine. Ed Sheeran Shivers. That is a banger to dance to. <laughs> that is a certified bop. Bop so, times 10. It, it, it could hit, you know, I, someone quickly volunteered you and I just kept my mouth shut. But I was like, she's not going to like the reaction she gets from her music. Yeah, I, I cracked under pressure. I didn't enjoy it. And I'm never going <laughs> to volunteer to be DJ again. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. That'll show them. That'll show them. That'll em. really, that really taught us a lesson. Yeah. So we get to the hotel. Our reservation for dinner was at 9 30, which I stay up relatively late, but I do not wait that long to eat. No, I'm like asleep by 9 30. Yeah. So we all get ready and go to dinner. And it was like the freaking best time ever. The ever. food's so good at Delilah. Yeah. There's live music. We're right. They sat us right by the stage. It was just, it was incredible. And then we went back to our room and played fishbowl, well, which is. We firstly gambled and we all won. Oh, yeah. Everybody won. Yeah. Not we me. All won. I don't gamble. I don't like it. What's your game? Back I played blackjack. I won. Yeah. I won. So I put $100 in and I won 500 wow. And then uh, Haley played roulette. She won. She won. 
600. Well, she put 200 and she won 600. And then Robbie put, played, um, he played both. Yeah. He played blackjack and roulette. Yeah. But I've never, and Paulina won too. Like we, I've never been in a group where everyone walked away happy with yeah. money. Yeah. So I was like, that was a thrill. And yeah, then, I'm with Tanya though. I can't do that anymore. I used to play blackjack. And when I was about 20, maybe 21, I was at a casino in Wisconsin, Ho-Chunk Casino, it's called, near the Wisconsin Dells. And I was barely old enough to gamble, but I lost $400. Oh. And I am not, I was not a guy that could lose $400. I did not have $400 to lose. <laughs> and that, and ever since then, I've played quarter video blackjack and nothing else. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't like card games that much, just in general. And so the thought of like paying money to play one is just not my cup of tea. I hate blackjack because you can so you can get yelled at for being bad at blackjack. That's like, true. Like, they'll get mad at you. Yeah, yeah, like, it gets competitive, but it's so fun. Like, and I think I went in knowing there was a certain. I'm I do have the ability to walk away, which I realize like a lot of people are like, I, if I just do this one more time, I can make it all back. But I was like, I'm gonna spend. I was like, I have. I'm gonna. I have $150 to spend on gambling. And if I lose it, it's done. I'm, that's all I'm doing. And, but I remember when I first ever gambled, I had like $20 in my account. My brother-in-law gave me like $20 and there was, there were $5 tables and I just played and I was so excited when I won a hundred dollars. I was like, I'm rich. I just <laughs> made money off of money. Right. And I get the appeal, but like I said, we all won. We all walked away after we won. And we went up to Tanya and Robbie's room and we played charades. No, fishbowl. <laughs> well, fishbowl, which is kind of a version of charades for, until 4 a.m. Like not drinking or anything. <laughs> like we were literally eating snacks, playing <laughs> charades. It was it was really fun, though. So then we went to bed, woke up, slept in, and then we went and had the win buffet, which I haven't had a buffet in a long time. And let me tell you something. When you have the option of anything and any type of food, I had fried rice and <laughs> spring egg rolls as my first meal. Like that was my first go. And then I got breakfast food <laughs> and then I went up and had some ice cream. Like, But it was so fun and it was just fun that it was really spontaneous and we just did it because I haven't done something like that in a long time. Yeah. I had a great time. I was very tired Sunday. Uh, yeah. To, yeah. But you know, I think that there's something that um it warms my heart when you spend time with like your best friend and your significant other. It just does something to me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not kidding. What are you talking about me? Yeah. Oh. What do you mean? Yeah, you're my <laughs> best friend. No, I know. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> um yeah, no, it was it was really, really fun. There was a lot of laughter. Like, I felt like we were just, like, all laughing the whole time. Yeah. There was one part of Fishbowl, like, we just all put in random words. Basically, you the first round, you describe yeah, it, first the word. Of all, if you're listening and you've never played Fishbowl, Google it, because it is such a fun game to play. So, yeah. Yesterday was a recovery day. I was very much out of it, just from, I, I guess... I normally stay up to like 12, oh, sometimes a one. It's the sleep 4 a.m. Is, is a whole new beast because we drank at dinner and then that was really it. Yeah. And then for me, at least. Yes. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like everyone has like different what they consider their like annual anniversary, what that day is. Do you guys do anything special on your anniversary? Um... I mean, yeah, we like, well, sometimes we'll take a trip or like do something just like, you know, with the two of us. Yes. Wait, so Mark, does your wife, does she shower before bed or do y'all both agree that it's She's fine? a before bed shower. I'm a morning shower. And she's just fine with you getting into her clean, clean bed sheets, with all like stick. all with the day still on yeah, you. The day. Yeah, unless unless I was super sweaty for some reason. Yes, it's fine. See, that's what changed me. I was a once a day shower and then she would not allow me to get into bed without showering. <laughs> Same with 95P. I was yeah. like, listen, if if you're like one a day, it's got to be at night before you get into the bed. Yeah, the bed needs to be crisp and clean, yes. fresh as a daisy. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I have I'm I'm in a relationship, but it's private. I don't it's not a public thing. So, you know, it it can be complicated, especially because my whole job and life is sharing my life. And um, but, you know, I had a public relationship and now I'm in one that's not public. And it's like there's pros and cons to it. It's like my own. It's ours. And I don't, you know, have to worry about people's opinions of it who aren't um in my life I guess on a personal level but there's also something really cool about sharing your love so I kind of go back and forth on if and when I will share it if I you know find someone that's that's fine but whatever they want to do I don't really care either we're way. also like I don't feel I don't think of me and Daryl yeah. as like a very public yeah like i don't think we're that cool i think you're a lot cooler than us yeah <laughs> and like, like people care more about you yeah like, I, don't think I, don't about. No. I was like people are were they like what, what happened were they like mean or they commented about your relationship once or something no i think it was just um i came from i was on the bachelor and so like all people cared about was my yeah. love life so i yeah. think then yeah. i had a relationship yeah, 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 and yeah. it felt like i remember feeling like like you, you like no like we were gonna break up and i still like there was this high of posting photos and and then when i stopped it was like well what happened what happened it felt like all of a sudden i'm going through a breakup and people are strangers are in my business and so it's kind of this whole yeah. thing so it was just different yeah. well i don't think Great i think book. there's a lot of um there's also a lot of pressure of people being like what's your type? What are you looking for? And if you all, you write it, everyone has the opportunity to write everything they're looking for on paper, but then you meet someone and it's like the piece of paper kind of means nothing. Like, I think you have your non-negotiables in in certain ways, but I think with everything, it's all about that connection that you have with someone. Like you refer to Daryl as your soulmate. Like you, like you knew beyond what could be written down that he was the one. I talk talk about this a lot to my gal friends too, who are looking, I'm like, I never had a specific type. And I have a friend who is like only tall, dark hair, no blonde. I'm like, all right, but (laughs) you can see my track record is like opposite looking human beings. But I was like, I refuse to marry a redhead and have redhead babies. <laughs> and I got me a redhead with a ginger yeah. baby. I mean, anything can happen. Anything, anything can happen. is possible. <laughs> so true. It's so true. Red of ones, red of ones. I think that's, I, I really think, I, I focus so much on writing down like my dream guy which is really funny because it has, couldn't be more opposite. And I, I just think people spend so much time doing that. And then you meet someone and it kind of all goes out the window. So I say call in the one because she did it and it worked if you're yeah. ready. But just Holler know there's homework when you're ready. But there is homework. But it's good. It's the good. I'm like, I can, I'm an adult. I can make it six hours without having to eat if I need to or having one snack. I know. I don't know why I have this like mentality of when I'm traveling, I have to have snacks with me in case like God forbid something happens to like I'm, a, the car when I get to my destination and we're like stuck on a freeway or like, I don't even know. 95 Have you P. downloaded lots of entertainment for yourself to watch on the way so you don't have to be stuck if there's no entertainment on the plane? Nah, I, have, I have some podcasts downloaded, so. Okay. All right. Love a crime junkie session. There you go. Um, but Tanya and 95P are more alike than they are different. I'll say that because mm. I have to deal with the snack thing with both of these loonies every time we go somewhere. <laughs> By the way, when we went to Vegas, I packed like um a, like a little snack pack of grapes and I did it for I packed one for every person. Yes. Well, start that mm-hmm. my TikTok. Okay, good, this good. brings up such a good topic because I've been thinking about this. Um, Tia from The Bachelor World, she said the other day she was talking about on her Instagram story, which I feel like this all the time. Like if you don't have a family, you don't have like or if you're not if you don't post about your love life, you don't have kids or you don't have like. I don't know what the other thing you're not like under 21 um like you almost kind of feel like you don't really have like a I feel like this a lot like I don't really have a I don't know what my thing is because when I was on The Bachelor that was my thing and then as time went on and I distanced myself from that being my thing it was like people cared about my love life and then I posted about my love life and now I'm in this place where I'm like I could share my love life and I would feel like I would have so much like support and love 
But it's like, do I share my love life for the sake of social media? No. That's what I'm saying. But you do it because you want to. I know. But like, I always joke around about like, what's my like, I, you know, at a certain point, and I don't know if I don't know if you ever feel like this, because you start you have built your career from something like very traditional of like being on the radio and then having a podcast. And now you're like popular on social media from doing like these very traditional things that like people have followed your career and stuff. Whereas mine came from this like very untraditional way of life, like going on the reality show. It was like thrown into my lap at a quick thing. And then it was like, does anyone care about anything else that I'm doing? But why do you care if anybody cares? That's well, because question. it's kind of my job for people to care about what my life is. You know, my social media presence is supposed to have like something that makes people care, whether I'm doing something that's like productive in helping people or my story, whatever that is, which I do have a really good story that I'm going to share one day. But like right now, it's like without taking that out of it, what is it that makes me interesting? Are you asking me that question? Or are you no, like that's like it? my question. It's like, what makes me interesting beyond like who I'm dating? There, there's so much. It's so, it, I, I just feel like, I think, I, I guess it's different maybe because you're looking at it from a job perspective. Like it's your job for people to care. But I think that's the biggest thing is like social media isn't real life. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not, but it, it's it, not, it's not who you are as a person. It's just an extension of just like posting fun things or talking to people about stuff, creating community. Like it's not, that big of a thing I know but sometimes I I I like envy people who just share their life on there because I'm like wow to just like be able to do that without any fear or like repercussions yeah but you of all people know like sometimes you see a person that's known on social media for having a perfect (laughs) family and the cutest kids and they do all this stuff and behind the scenes they're yelling at their little ones to do better and smile bigger and it's not as pretty as it looks so you're we, right. You're right. Right. We know that it's not necessarily. And sometimes I look at people like that and it makes me kind of sad because I'm like these poor kids. Mm-hmm. I think it's good to have a balance, you know, like mm-hmm. also your social media is your Becca Tilly. It's not Becca Tilly and significant other Becca Tilly and family. It's just Becca Tilly. Like who, who's Becca Tilly? You're whoever you want to be. And who cares if people like it or don't? I do care oh. if people like <laughs> Well, that's what I think we need to get past. But Okay, but I think you're both right. Like, Becca, I see where you're coming from. What's your thing? Because your thing is kind of still Bachelor. Like, you're still kind of in the wake of The Bachelor and now this podcast. But Tanya's right in the sense that I do think your social media would be much bigger and more successful if you cared less what people think. Yeah. Because I do think that the ones that are just, just no inhibitions, put it all out there, and, and whatever you think of it, you think of it. That's more real, and it's going to attract more people and more detractors at the same time. It's a double-edged sword. Well, yeah. And I feel like I used to be way more open when I, I would just like talk to the camera and just like talk about random stuff. And somewhere along the way, I feel like I got, I don't know, somewhere along the way I got like distract or scared to do that. And I don't know where it happened or why it happened, but um, Yeah. I don't know if it's from if it's like all kind of centered around I shared everything to an extent where I was sharing it was this like false sense of reality of like sharing my relationship with Robert and posting photos like knowing that we weren't going to be together forever. But, you know, posting these like gorgeous photos that made people feel like they were invested in our relationship Mm. and then the disappointment of not having that and knowing that you know, sharing your relationship is what's going on behind the scenes. That makes sense. Feeling like you let people down would make you hesitant to do that again, not just yeah. relationships in everything. Yeah. And so, and then on top of that, you had the the fact that I, you know, am so scared to have a pick a side on anything. It's like, it's hard. But I I really resonated with Tia because she was saying, like, sometimes I feel like I'm in this in between where I don't have. And she just recently shared her relationship and he's her boyfriend's so cute. But she was like, it's one thing to share it my like my life, but it's different when someone else is involved. 
And I really resonated with that because it's like this in between of like, I'm not married. I don't have a baby. What is my like niche thing? Like my job is kind of not traditional. I have the podcast, which I love, but it's that like, how much can you post about one thing? So I think it's just like a normal feeling like in my age group of, and I think people feel like this in real life, like outside of the social media world of like, I'm not engaged. Like I don't have kids. What am I? I'm supposed to have all these things at this age, according to society, but I don't. And so I just want to let you know if you're out there and you have that thought, like you're not alone in it. Keeping things private just to keep them private. And it's like eating you up inside then that's not fun either. You know, I don't like, really feel eaten up inside about And If anything, I feel eaten up inside because like that feel, I guess not even eaten up inside. I feel more like, you know, there's so many people that are like, why are you so scared to share your relationship? It's like, there's two people in this relationship and I'm not the only one. And it's not all about me. And it's, it's also like, you know, there's yeah but you talk about it and you compromise like that's what what red star and i did you know he was like your job is public i'm Mm -hmm. super private let's talk about it let's you know like i love you and i love i support you and i encourage you and i i think it's awesome that you're passionate about what you do so let's find a happy medium yeah i guess it's finding the happy medium communicating with your and also if you went all the way 100 percent open about your relationship you're right that does put a lot of pressure mm-hmm. on that relationship because now people are invested in it and now you guys have to deal with that and and comments and all this other stuff that adds something to it that most relationships don't have to deal with and that's not even fair that's what my therapist said she goes just so you know like whenever you're ready go for it but just make sure that you're ready because once it's out there you can't it's like toothpaste yeah. like once it's right. out you can't put it back in yeah but right. you also can you don't have to make that every single thing that you post no it's it, like a portion it's a, it's like a portion yeah, but of your life i know but what my experience has been is that you share a little and it's like more 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 and, and then the there's like keeper i know but i feel you pressure feel, you should feel empowered not pressure I like, think I feel a good balance of both. I feel pressure and power. <laughs> but anyways, my whole point is to say, like you talking about everyone wants a ring. I, I don't think like that. I The ring, that that is not ever, I haven't never dreamed of like having the ring. And like once I have a ring, my life will be complete. But I know a lot of people feel that that sense of like where I'm at in my life by a certain age is supposed to look like this. And then when it doesn't, you almost feel like you're not doing something right. Yes. I really relate to this because actually 95P and I feel very similarly to Ashley where it's like that feeling of, is that what we want? And Did you guys talk about kids? I mean, we've been together for almost four years. Like we talk like, but Easton, I do the same thing when I see Cute. like... <laughs> and I know it's different when it's your child and you have a different yes. level of patience. But when I see like a bad kid or like just a struggle, I'm like, God, I'm glad that's not me. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, you know, I'm still, I think, in a selfish phase of my life where I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to have to worry about the responsibility. Like even sometimes having Phoebe feels like, you know, it's like I have to find someone to keep her or somewhere for her to go when I travel. And it's like, it is a big responsibility that I don't take lightly. So I totally get the struggle of wondering, will I feel like I missed out eventually if I don't have kids? So Ashley, I relate to you. I don't know that I have any help, but I think Easton's advice, if you can, I mean, you're 26. So I would say travel, see the world, do everything you want to do and revisit this in a few years and see if you still feel the same way. We had a very low key day yesterday because my body said, sis, you're 33. Yeah. You had too many <laughs> drinks last night. You better <laughs> rest up. So we just like lay, were lazy, sat around the house. Um, we ended up, Haley made um, lasagna. Nice. We watched A Quiet Place too, which is just so stressful. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Those movies are just the silence in them alone has me like on edge and I don't like it. Uh. I don't watch scary movies for that reason. It's like, why put myself through it? Yeah. Then we played cards. Technology is so hard. Okay. Listen to this. It's not just (laughs) technology. So 
we so on Saturday on my actual birthday. So Laura flew in in the morning, went and got her from the airport, and then came back. And then we Haley surprised me with a lunch at uh, Nobu and Malibu, which is um, amazing. And so we went to lunch, but everyone was coming to my house to set up for the party. And so Tanya was like. doing y'all did your i mean anniversaries are weird because like traditionally you celebrate them on the day you started date officially or whatever but i saw we celebrate ours on like basically the same like the day we met met. yeah Yeah. because it's like okay so then we became boyfriend girlfriend in january go through that is it ever gonna happen for me yeah and i also I think it's interesting because I watch people's videos now from a different perspective because I remember thinking I'm never going to be that person who like falls in love or like feels that giddiness or um, gets like insecure, jealous because of, so, you know, like being in a relationship with someone or like letting yourself feel vulnerable. Like I never thought I'd be that person. And I see other people talking about it and they're like, I just don't, I don't get jealous or I don't feel um you know, I don't get like giddy about someone. And it's, I always just want to be like, just wait, like it only takes one person for that to change that about you. And it's, it is like a very uncomfortable, vulnerable place to be in. Because I even said, I think last week on the podcast, sometimes I miss that like detached mentality because it made things easier in a sense. I was always just steady. And but then you miss out on the real highs. Like even though the lows can suck, like you miss out, like when you just stay consistent and you don't let yourself feel sad or like extremely excited and happy, you miss like the, the like kind of core of life, which is like the real highs and then the low lows, even though they're really hard. Yeah. Would you mind if Red Star and I ever did amazing race together? I think we could do well and win the million. Uh, you and him win it, and neither could me in 95p. <laughs> we just, it wouldn't go well. <laughs> just won it. And that's just the facts. I've had to lay out who I would choose. Arden, my sister's girlfriend, is one of my choices. Oh, wow. And I feel like Red Star, because I don't yeah, think we'd yell at each other. And but he's competitive. He's competitive, but he wouldn't, he'd be like, it's fine, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, I, because fr- I'd probably freak out. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Okay. Uh, Haley and I flew in on what days like, don't even matter. Like honestly, well, no, because we got there a, a whole day later, and y'all were like hung over all day on Friday. Yeah, and so we were like we had planned a dinner to made a reservation and went out, and y'all came and met up with us. Really rallied that night. We really did the whole weekend. We really rallied. Yeah, y'all really did. Yeah. Also, so Haley and I are checking in at the hotel. We stay at the same hotel, and Becca, Kufrin, and Thomas walk out. Yeah, and my listen, God. Tom- Listen, my god thomas is handsome like you when you watch him on tv you're like wow he's really handsome he is like a stat like a greek statue in real life i, I literally found myself going like this yeah. you can't see me because this is a podcast but it was almost as if i was looking at the statue of liberty <laughs> yeah. this la this cali girl dips below 60 and i'm like sh- shivering i know Haley was like putting together her outfits and i was like it's really cute but you it's summery it's yeah. gonna be like 40 degrees there yeah. she's like so you don't like it and i'm like no i like it it's just weather not a weather appropriate i also need to tell you but it was really cute so we got back that night and before we went to sleep we were like laying in bed and he was just like he was so happy that we got to actually spend like quality time with you and Haley. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, you know, I, I really love, I really love the person that Becca is. Oh, I know. And I, nice. But it was like such a sweet way. He said it too. Yeah. He was like, she's just so kind and so loving and like, oh, just so, f- I know it literally made me cry. <laughs> I'm like, you can't do this to me before I go to bed. It was so sweet. Oh. But so you guys took the the early flight and we took the later flight. It's hard to say which one's worse, honestly. So the the thing actually that saved me was that because we got back to the hotel. It wasn't. I mean, it was like midnight or something. It wasn't insanely 
late or anything. And we went to sleep. And so we had to wake up at six. So we were going to get six hours, but I slept horrible. So when my alarm went off, I, I didn't even feel like I had gone to sleep. So I wasn't like dying. Yeah. And I actually slept on the plane, which I can never sleep on a plane. Oh, so that's nice. Once we got home, got in and out, just laid on the couch all day. I was like, I'm so happy we did that. (laughs) Um, Yeah, Haley goes, Haley got the Taylor Swift package with like the scarf and the shirt. And she's like, you can wear my shirt. And I'm like, it's not even mine. Uh, Yeah, we're driving to the wedding and we're in the Uber. And literally all Beck and I are doing is like rattling off Taylor Swift lyrics, like literally just finishing each other's sentences with a different Taylor Swift lyric, poor red star and Haley were like, where yeah, are they said we could do, we should have done a segment of the podcast where we yeah, they were like, you should do lyrics. this on your podcast. I'm like, yeah, but we're not even making sense. Yeah. We were just spitting them out as they came. Yeah. I was like, could you imagine, just imagine somebody just being so casually cruel in the name of being honest. Yeah. Well, I know for sure I would remember it all too well. Could you imagine being kept like a secret when you kept them like an oath? No. <laughs> and you guys did this in the car the whole time? For we 30 just, minutes. Yeah, for 30 oh minutes on the way there. Yeah. Haley and uh, Red Star were very confused. <laughs> um, but also amused. Confused and amused. Yes. Yeah. Confused and amused. Um, so I went to the Harry Styles concert on Saturday. So did I. How did you, you did? not see each other? Yes. Why did we not uh, gather and, uh, you know. I don't know because it was like absolute chaos there. It was pretty crazy, but it would have been nice to see you. So I know that would have been, I would have been thrilled. Were you there alone or were, were you there Just daughter? by myself. I go city to city. I'm going to Houston on Wednesday. <laughs> yourself <laughs> kids and my <laughs> wife and my kids each brought a friend that's so fun you're yeah, such a so cool fun. dad thank you so we're standing in line getting our tickets and uh julie bowen from modern family wow. is in front of us and her friend uh was so nice and like we entered i can't remember what the initial conversation was i think we were saying like is this the line to get the tickets or whatever and um, her friend was like, you look so familiar to me. And um, I, she looked really familiar to me as well, but we couldn't really figure it out. So then Haley who goes... Was her, who was her friend, Sofia Vergara? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. So her, her friend, her name was Rachel. But her... So then Haley says to Julie, she was like, I'm a big fan of the show. Just want to say hi. I'm friends with Sarah Hyland. Like, so nice to meet you or whatever. They were the coolest. Like, we waited in line for a good bit. They were literally like the coolest. I was I was like, I would be so excited to hang out with her again or see her again. Like it was one of those things when you meet someone and they're just like awesome. I love that. Yes. If you're in a relationship and you're trying to get it to work, why wouldn't you want every area of your life to be fulfilling for both people? Because exactly. I personally... I find pleasure in my significant other being pleasured. So like as long as we're both happy, I feel like that's a huge important part for me. But I think sometimes so- sex and intimacy is a very selfish um act because we want to feel good so badly that sometimes we neglect what's important for the other person. Mm-hmm. From me before my very eyes, I have to watch him die. Oh my god! Yeah, it that was, was crazy. That was a most. So I'm hoping the first two episodes were like emotional, setting the scene, and I'm hoping the rest of the series is fun. Dating Carrie, the girls. I will say this: I'm very much looking forward to the next episode. Me too. So they did their job because they okay. got everyone talking. <laughs> everyone's like even literally Haley and I were talking about it and she never watched it and she goes wait so and I was telling her like in dramatic fashion what happened as if she would care and she actually did care and she was like wait can I see this scene and I was like wow so people I think even Mark even though we didn't sell it to you with this conversation I do <laughs> think they got people talking enough that people were like 
I'm going to see what this is all about. Like I had people mess respond to my um, post and they were like, I didn't even watch ever watch sex in the city, but I watched this episode. I can't believe they killed him off. So like <laughs> yeah, that people are talking about it. Cat word. And then next year, which I'm going to write down, my word is going to be unfiltered. Oh, really? Because Wait, it's funny you say that. Tell me why. I feel that I have lived my whole life like filtering everything I say or do to make sure that other people are pleased with me. And I've really been working on trying to let go of the expectation of other people, but I've still found myself to be very filtered and not in a way where I'm like, I share every single thing in my life, but I just, I watch people like I, the people who I'm gravitated towards, especially like on social media and stuff are the people who are just kind of like living their life. They talk about things they're not, they have opinions on things. And it's kind of like, if, if people disagree, like that's fine. If we can have a conversation about it, cool. If we just have different opinions, cool. And I kind of want that to be my mentality going into the next year of being like, this is who I am. This is what I think about this. This is my opinion on this without worrying about backlash and the T words yeah, that we don't say. Yeah, they're gone in 2022. Bye. And I also think unfiltered in the sense of like, even though I, it's so dumb to even talk about like Instagram filters, but like how much that I've been trying to on social media, not use like a filter on the Instagram stories and stuff. Just like really try to be more just who I am, like, but deeper than what I show on surface level. Cause I never feel like I'm not myself. I just feel like I have to, I filter. So I'm like cautious of what I give opinions on or what I say. So I want to be a little more just like open. I love that. I love that for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, it's not, it's going to, it's not going to be, you know, it's a slow roll. Yeah. A slow, it's a slow roll out. It's a slow, ro- a slow on filtering. Yeah. I'm not just all of a sudden going to come out and start just like <laughs> <laughs> letting loose. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> not just going to come out and do that, huh? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that word and I appreciate that sentiment because I also feel <laughs> um, Yeah, I actually would say mine kind of goes back to therapy too, but more so in the sense of like doing couple therapy and individual therapy and just kind of being able to make the decision to change the things that are like unhealthy patterns that I never even realized were unhealthy patterns. Patterns. And also having very hard conversations with um, people that mean a lot to me in my life that I've, as someone who's non-confrontational and always likes to just be the one to not say anything to keep the peace, like having hard conversations with people that wouldn't have happened without the um, growth in other areas. So I'm I'm going to feel really proud of that every year, I think at the end of every year, as long as I'm doing that, because I think there's always going to be room to grow. And I think as long as you like, as soon as you feel like you have no more room to grow, then that's not good. Because, like, we're always going to have things where we can improve on in life. So, let's see. That's mine, too. 